Welcome to the show. Rose Town to Vancouver. Oh, yeah, that was a big journey. It's different, very different. It started in the UK? Started in the UK, born and raised. How, yeah. how long were you in the UK again for? Well, born in 2000, moved to Saskatchewan in, in 2014. So yeah. I was 40, I had my 15th birthday in Canada. Right, man. That so shit was crazy. I remember the first day you came. Yeah. <sighs> that I spent, was wild. I spent most of my, uh, you know, growing up days experienced a lot in Canada. So yeah, that was the time. I don't remember the. I don't remember much of the UK. No, not really. Really? So it's like you know, it's it's there, but it's like I was a kid. So yeah. Most of it was just like youth stuff, kicking a football around. Okay, you know, so it's like around. the real memories are in Rose Town. Yeah, yeah. Fucking like, around, like yeah, flats. Get, getting all those, getting all those new experiences for sure. You guys want to buy? <laughs> no, I don't want any carrots. No, I don't want two two. Yeah, that was experience. That was quite culture. the time, man. And then finding out, like, how do you think you found out you're creative? How do you think you found out? Trauma. <laughs> yeah. I like mean, shit hurt and you were like, yeah, you started channeling yeah, I mean, it. I feel like a lot of artists have to go through some sort of trauma yeah. to be able to actually express who they are deep down. Yeah, man. You know, I mean, real music comes from experience and it always seems to boil down to like deep experience, not just. Not the surface stuff. Not the surface stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Not just for attention, like you're looking deeper within to like find exactly find your exactly. own unique voice. Storytelling. Yeah, storytelling. storytelling. You're telling your own story. But obviously, doing it through music is a lot more fun than doing it just talking. Yeah, and how how would you say you do it through music? Because you're pretty like your writing style. Um, you're pretty adventurous with that. Um, I like to be surreal. I like to kind of try and not make my music direct. Um, I want people to chase the lyrics. I want them to uh, try and decipher them, like it's a cipher. It's like a, it's like not all right there on it's the plate. You right gotta there. dive in. And yeah, yeah, look yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, dude, that and is so. A lot, a lot of experimenting with certain metaphors and stuff. You know, kind of describing myself to something so bizarre. You know that. People don't really understand what the fuck I'm even talking about. Totally, man. Yeah. Totally. Do you have a favorite like song or or of or, mine or writing or is it some some favorite Style, project? Uh, um, I mean, my most recent mixtape. Yeah. Is and been, I, so, I still haven't listened so to that one. So that took me a year to make whilst I was working. So like I'd work. Yeah. Eight hours a day, Monday to Friday. I was Holy super shit. tired. I had no time for the project. You like put all the time in. I put it's I like... put most of my time in on weekends and like maybe one or two days from Monday to Friday. Oh right, because it, a... it took me a year to make. So not full time art, but like you had your full time job, and then on top of that, you did like on top of that, I was full time art. Yeah, yeah, I was I was balancing the both. That's such a that's such a balance, dude. Like fucking balancing art and work, like. Frustrating. It's frustrating. Because I feel like when you're doing a regular nine to five, all you've got to think is the money. And it's it, it tears you away from like 
the real yeah. you. Yeah, the real you. Cause and where does your mind go when you're... Cause what, when I'm at what work... What were you doing uh, for work, if you don't mind me asking? I was manufacturing cleaning products, so like toilet cleaners, disinfectants, rinse aid, you know, Just kitchen... Just real, real fun shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Getting on a fork truck every day. <laughs> You got that fucking forklift certification. But I don't know, like, every time I was pulling up to work, I was just thinking of the money and, you know, that money were going towards coming to Vancouver. Yeah. Now here you are. And here I am. Lovely old Vancouver. It's not sunny out right now. But yeah, man. Check out this view. I don't know. I feel like um, being here is a lot more surreal and a lot more to take in than when I was even moving to Saskatchewan. Yeah, moving it's a to big place, man. It, the views here, dude, like, um, I thought Canada I had the Place, courage, but... Canada Place, like the cruise ship yeah. docking space, All right. those views yeah. are crazy. Coming yeah. from like a prairie kid where everything's flat, uh, yeah. and then you see in this just massive, mm -hmm. that's, that was, that's insane. Same with the people too, like, I, I don't know, like, Saskatchewan's got very quiet life scenarios and society and then you come to the city, city and yeah you're walking down the street and all you can hear is like one person on one phone in your left ear one person on in in your right ear on the phone it's like fucking gta there's all there's always something going on here mm -hmm. always something going on but i came i came here for the for the music and for the art and the expression yeah. and yeah. the acting and just everything to do with the art industry and uh I mean, everyone viewing this, whether you've seen my YouTube or not, you've probably seen Fear and Loathing in Vancouver, and it addresses yeah. that I'm not actually going to be staying here. And, and what what brought you to that? What brought you to deciding that you got... Because you worked so hard to get here, so when you got here, why why do you think... Not, not for me right now. British Columbia. The biggest thing is... British Columbia is very expensive. It's so expensive. And on top of being an international student, paying for the international fees for school yeah. is ridiculous right now. On top of rent, on top of travel expenses and food, I physically, I'm just, it's just going to depress me, man. I don't want to invest all my money into that. You know, all that time going into acting, when it doesn't really exactly guarantee me a job. And to a degree, you probably are aware of the fact that you've made your music career like on exactly. your own. Exactly. And you know that yeah. you can do it's this a call, shit. It's a calling, for sure. It's a calling. Yeah. So you feel like even if you do want to act, it's like you'll find a way. And you don't yeah. think you need to throw money at I don't think I need institution to, to, to yeah. do that? I don't think I need to throw money at it. And I feel like, like, like you've just said... I can find my way into acting no matter what. Say if I keep going with my YouTube and keep going with my music, that's the biggest calling right now is creating my agenda, what is minor lyrics online. Yeah, man. And you... You, you were showing me your views last night too. Just how the, how those views have switched up. Yeah. Do you mind sharing that? Yeah, yeah. Seven days, 12,300 streams. That's that's big. It's it's crazy, man. Cause like I remember, what grade were we in? Like grade ten when you grade, just started that YouTube channel. Grade ten, yeah. yeah. I had probably uh, oh, 60, I... sixty subscribers. <laughs> Damn. Doing like videos in in like my bedroom, I'm gonna be as quiet and as chill as I can. So my mom ain't like, Caleb, shut up, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> trying to sleep. God damn, yeah. you know, fucking and... twelve thousand. That, that streams I yeah mean, yeah yeah subscribers oh it's it's very hard to get i mean even after subscribers are tough man even after four or five years it's so depressing i'm only i'm like pushing sorry close to 600 that's pretty it's dope, like i've not bro. even made a thousand yet that's pretty dope though because a thousand they say that i've heard that um, once you get a thousand, a thousand it's supposed to a thousand core followers is like you got people that respect you, man. Mm, I guess. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if you like sold like a CD or something. Like we're not in a generation of CDs, but if you're selling a project, a thousand people, even if ten percent of those people bought your thing, that's a hundred people. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah, like you, you start to have a following. I don't and know. That respects you and, and knows knows you. 
Because I, I think you're one of the fucking rawest artists I know. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, I've met a fair amount of artists now in my, in my travels across the country, and mm-hmm. it's like, you, you have something raw, and you really, like, every time I talk to you, I know you know what you're aiming for. Like, you have, like, a vision in mind kind of thing, right? I do have a vision, yeah. yeah. I, I don't have steps to get to that vision, but I do have a vision in mind. Whenever I, uh, you know, lay some money down on, you know, upcoming potential music videos or YouTube videos, I want nothing more but to make my content surreal. Absolutely. Like, David Lynch or just something really like unique and feverish i don't know like that is my that is my um theme with my lyrics just fever dream yeah surrealism just complete like bizarre like what the you know is is that kid like created so so here's a question would uh would you say minor lyrics is multi medium would you say minor lyrics transcends music or would you say minor lyrics is simply your music persona like, would you use him in acting? Would you use him as a director, as an artist? No, no? no he's no. just music. He's just music. He's just yeah, music. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine, me and my lyrics detach when it comes to acting. Like, that's a whole different thing. Like, I've not really showed too many people like my in-depth acting. Not many, not many people have seen it yet, and no. like, I want to showcase it to the world. Like, I genuinely want to show people how good I can. Act. Oh man, I, I, I can't you'll wait. See, you'll I see, you'll see it. Wait. It'll be, it'll be on YouTube. And yeah, I'm sure. Like with whatever skits that I do, or mini movies, or whatever I film, yeah. I'll show it. Absolutely. But unfortunately, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm not going into school, so huh. I can't, I can't showcase it through but, going to school, which is so devastating. But it's all good, you know, there'll be other opportunities. And if it's a financial reason, that's really something that you can't control Control, 100%, right? Like you showed up here, you're here, Uh, you're you're ready, but dude, fucking rent's gone up in the last year. I mean, even to rent just a regular place right now, you're you're looking at 1,500. And you're definitely not in the heart of the city. No, you're like I'm not, I'm you're like a, over an hour out, Pit aren't Meadows. you? Yeah, Pit Meadows. Yeah. It's, it's it's a ways away. It's Bosan yeah, yeah. Sky Train. Yeah, that's what I used to say when I, I went to audio production school here for a little bit. Literally like six blocks away from this hotel, mm-hmm. and um, I would say on my way to school, I took every form of transportation there was. Yeah, I was see, in a bus. I was in a train. I was on a boat. As well. I was like walking. <laughs> It gives you a sense of like that, like while reality is kicking in, you know. I, you don't like the transportation? No, I, I'm not a big fan of. I, th- I find that transportation. I find that like almost inspiring in a way. There's so much to like. You look, you're you're in the train and you're looking at the window and it's like you see you see the you downtown see everything, skyline. That's definitely. Or like you're in the train and you you see like some some creatives and they're like doing their own thing, oh. like the dancers. Or I've never I haven't yeah. seen a ton of dancers. It's not New York, but like. Like I don't know, you just see other artists on the train, and it's like, oh shit! Like this is this is a creative city. I it's, just think the mountains have been inspiring for me. The mountains are fucking wild. Like I've never been in a place where I've been able to see mountains in the horizon, and that's yeah. a surreal feeling. Yeah. And I feel like that opens up my mind to like how far like nature is. Dude, seriously. Nature, mountains, nature helps with writing, for sure. You should have seen the clouds last night on the flight out here. The it clouds. was absolutely insane. I, I didn't usually record a shot out the window. I didn't, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll throw like a shot from another flight. But I didn't record these clouds. But man, these these were like, they look like waves. And then it was like all orange and oh. in the sky. And it's just like... Yeah, it kind of probably looked like heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when you get up there, you realize like the mountains, how just how big they are, the clouds, just how you just you see new perspectives when you when you fly or when you travel the world or when you move to a new city. Oh yeah, yeah. What would you say you have as an artist, um, having the opportunity to move in different like countries? Because oh, you've, you've got yeah. you've got a number of cultural influences coming from such different places. I'd definitely say that like all the culture influences have definitely like directed me to like pursue this harder than what I would have done if I actually just stayed in the UK because I can kind of get a sense of the reality in the UK 
and then Canada and mix them together like right. a like a mess. It's right. it's a mess. In my head it's a mess. But it, it allows for creative and unique kind of storytelling in my music. Yeah, that, that mess, that chaos. You're taking yeah. that and you're you're throwing it I'm into pro- yeah. a project that like it's got some order, it's got some organization, but in the same way it's like it's fucking surreal and it's yeah. it's unique and it's it's Bro, some of your songs are crazy. Crazy, yeah. Like yeah, the chaos yeah, in I them. I know, I know. Even me, I know. They're just like some of them are crazy good. Like you can listen to them and think, "Oh my god!" Like that song's actually like unique as hell and it's fun. But some songs, like I'm talking, you know, independent rapper. Yeah. They're just a mess. Yeah, they're, they're 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 the start. They're the right? Start, yeah. They're the they're, start. They're mess, Fucking but... Salt Nick and Mine in a Dreamland, oh, bro. I, Salt Nick. I throw that shit on so much. You know what's crazy? Mm. I actually like, you know how you can do YouTube to MP3? Oh, yeah. I ripped Salt Nick oh. and Dreamland because I was like, if Caleb ever deletes these ones, I oh. still want them. Yeah. I've they... actually got a USB of all my music. Like every song I've recorded, even stuff I haven't put out. A I've USB. Got, I've got a USB, oh. hundreds of songs. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. It's like my portfolio right there. Yeah. Yeah, and you have like, you have such a diverse portfolio now, Mm -hmm. having the opportunity to transcend mediums in music and you've done acting. Uh, Would you say there's any other mediums? Do you draw? Do you work with creative? I draw. um, I've always wanted to get a book going. Obviously, I don't think I'm gonna fully be able to do that myself. Colton, like Kidder from the Butterfly Effect song, he's actually going to be like we've talked about it like as a business idea. He's gonna write me my autobiography. Really? Yeah, um, he's gonna help me write my autobiography. And um, obviously, recently I've just picked up like writing, and even writing is a good form of hell yeah expression, even if it's just private. Yeah, writing is writing is something else for sure. Well, I think with i think youtube is just the biggest one because it allows me to see it's like a like a memory in it like a memo back into like the past i can show all my kids right everything like it's a when, I'm, when i'm yeah it's like it's a, a, it's yeah, a time yeah 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 that's that's very true that's exciting so actually i wanted i wanted to show you some stuff cuz uh okay you remember when i designed that shirt for you yeah. Years yeah. ago, and it was the minor lyrics tee. Yeah. Throw that up on the screen. Yeah. Man, we got to do some more collabs. Definitely. I want to I wanna push minor lyrics merge. I, I think a collab would be crazy because yeah. your art's so surreal, and or your music's so surreal, and my art's like fucking in that same. Exactly. Same exactly. style. Same vibe. Not style, vibe. But yeah, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some. I think you'll like this. Check that out. Holy crap. Show that to the camera. Madcap Collective, oh, all in it. So, say when you sell, when you sell Madcap merchandise, yeah. Yeah. will it come in a package like this with its OG logo? When you order, when you when order you on the site madcap.com, you're gonna get this. That's dope. That's like, that's legit. Yeah. And like, you know, I've always loved that logo. The fucking OG logo is crazy, Yeah. Man. Yeah. That was 19 when I designed that. So do you want me to, wait, am I open, open this one, bro? On camera, okay. Let's do this, let's have a look. Bit sticky she is. She's a bit sticky. All right, let's have a look. Mad cow. Oh, dude, that's sick. Dude, with a with a like thing. Oh, dude, that's dope. Yo, that's sick. Yo, with the tag. Yeah, bro, with a tag. Let's go. Hell yeah. Oh, white one. Nice. Holy, you've got the tags and everything. Is that a sticker? Oh my God, dude, that's cool. <laughs> Whoa, I like that design, bro. Holy shit. 
Yeah, these are legit, aren't they? These, yeah, are, man. these are legit. We got them screen printed and stuff. I got like a whole, like, I got like 120 in stock. Holy. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. What it's, the hell, bro? It's exciting, you've dude. Got, you've got legit, like, oh my god, bro. Whoa, dude, I like this one. Dude, I like that one. I like that one. That one's fucking sick, dude. I like that one. Shout out Meadow. Meadow. The co-designer on that one. All right. We'll yeah, put his dude, at in the that, bio. That were a cool... Uh, dude, that's crazy. It's like I've literally like just unpacked Yeah. something that Zoomies would sell at like fucking $80 a shirt. Uh-huh. You got the mad cap again. Hell yeah, that's like that's like professional art with, you see with this tags shit and on the back. Welcome to the collective. Hell yeah, <laughs> dude. dude! You've got something going on here with with packaging and everything. Makes my willy bounce. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! Is there a location? Yeah, get like a pan and then. Try one of those on. Yeah. I kind of like that one with face on it, so I'll probably wear this one. The meadow design? Yeah, this Nosferatu, one. Nosferatu, let's go. Yeah, man. There it is. What's that? A jumper? Fucking purple, that's sick. Oh, now that is a... Dude, that's a fucking clean design. Hold up. That is clean. Holy shit, I feel fresh. Dude, it's comfy. Get your Madcap merch, honestly. Theo's gonna be the next biggest in the game, I'm telling you. I'm not even joking about that. Yo, I got an idea. What? We should fucking put this sticker under the desk. Yeah. Like in here, and then do like a fucking Easter egg. See so yeah. if you can find this room. Yeah, if you find this room, we did a podcast in here. <laughs> okay, this desk, usually it sits there. We're going to put a sticker in the bottom corner. Case fell apart again. Grungy fucking case, huh? <laughs> you fucking hell, man. Minor lyrics is case. Isn't that sick? <laughs>